I showed the boy a movie recently. Yes. King Kong. Oh, yeah. He's not scared at all, which is great. But the thing about the movie that makes it great is the humanity or the, the soul of King Kong. That you can really read that on his face. So I'm watching this and I'm like, this is the problem of Dragonheart. CGI can be crappy as long as you can feel something for the character. This is why Andy Serkis is so good in as Gollum Smeagol. Draco in Dragonheart is just so, this is my face moving like this. I am sad. I'm making a joke. You know, yeah. and when you watch King Kong, you're thinking this is a clay puppet that's being manipulated. So it's not like getting down on CG for being bad CG. It's just unsoulful special effects. What was the boy's reaction after the movie was over? What did he have to say about it? What were his takeaways? He just walks around on all fours with his like his butt in the air, like he's a monkey. That's, that's his takeaway. That's enough. Welcome back to the basement, Craig. You yes. showed up just in time for unboxing. Yes, just in time. This is a satellite show to Welcome to the Basement, which is a movie watching and chat show that we do here on this channel. And we open our mail and we talk about our donors, people who go to Welcome to the Basement.com. Welcome to the Basement. People who go to Welcome to the Basement Show.com and contribute. There's a donation button on it if you want to do it yourself. Here is a list. Michael Abraham, Pop Liturgy, Andrea, Luke, Brian, Lucas, David, Carelock Services, Eric, Thomas, Kieran, Grant, Catherine, Stephanie, Nathan, Stephen, Laura, Thomas, B.A., Mikey, D., Chris, Tyler, Kai, J.P., Sean, Maurizio, David, Robert, Patrick, Graham, Kendall, Mark, Jenny, Robert, John, and Tabitha. Thank you. Thank you all. Postcards. Who's got postcards? I've got them right here. This Whoopi Goldberg postcard is from Andrew, who says, Please say hi to my buddy, Srinjoy. I turned him on to your show, and hopefully he's watching right now. Hopefully. This Kuwait Now postcard is from Anthony. Thumb kisses from Camp Arifan, Kuwait. Cheers from this military brat, now active army, spreading the Batman Smells song. <laughs> Shout out to Baby Cookie and Cape Date. All right. Grace made it to Serling Fest in Binghamton, New York. I will be holding these memories close to my heart for the rest of my life. A one-of-a-kind experience. If you ever come to Binghamton, try Lost Dog Cafe. Great food. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Dangerous Bear postcard from Sean Henry. A Mammoth Seen It For You, 1997's The Edge. Written by David Mammoth. Hopkins and Baldwin face off against the wilderness. And each other. And a bear. A dangerous bear. I have seen it. I love that movie. I've been meaning to watch it again ever since. Something about Baldwin. There was a stretch of time. He had that like great run on SNL. God, I wish that he had a different life where he was just a comedic actor. And then he got this great life where he was just a comedic actor for a long time. And now it's like, man, I wish he could do dramas and we could take him seriously. The comedy world traded Tom Hanks for an Alec Baldwin. <laughs> you send us questions. Sometimes you send them to our Facebook page. Sometimes our YouTube c comments. Sometimes by postcard. You send them, we answer them. Here to watch 08. For some reason, I didn't see Matt as the camping type. It's true. I'm kind of not the camping type. I go on one camping trip a year. It's two nights of camping, and that's plenty. I was raised camping. Not that I was homeless or a hippie or anything like that. But my parents were teachers. We would go camping every single summer for three to five weeks. Wow. I was in Boy Scouts. My mom was a Girl Scout leader, and I would go on camping trips with her when I was young. I was camping so often that I'd have to say that before I turned 18, more than a year of my life was spent sleeping in a tent. After I was 18, I didn't go camping for years. I just could not stand sleeping on the ground anymore. Sleeping in the tent is kind of a drag. Um, I do like being taken out of my element for a few days. You know, that's fun. Campfires. Campfires are nice. The company, of course, mm -hmm. is the main reason. But after the first night, everything is dirty and damp. And I just can't, oh, I just can't stand that. It seems like there's so much work that you constantly have to do to get to that point where you can just sit down. Yeah. And then you have to go to the bathroom. I have to walk like half a block, a block, <laughs> three blocks. There's not even blocks out here. And to go to the camp, to, to, to go to the toilet. It's a hassle. Washing dishes. Oh, washing dishes. Jeez. Oh. Arizona J, which is a great name. What's the most beautiful location you've seen in a film? Heaven's Gate. That movie is gorgeous top to bottom. Most of it being filmed around uh, the Grand Tetons. And even when they're not in the mountains, they have really great locations like when they film in Oxford, England for Harvard and stuff like that. 
People send records to the show in our P.O. box, and when I get them, I try and listen to as many of them as I can. These are a couple of soundtracks that I didn't have time to get to last time. How the West Was Won, original soundtrack. This is a score, orchestral interpretations of traditional folk songs like Shenandoah, things mm -hmm. like that. Green Sleeves shows up a lot, which doesn't really say the Old West to me, Green Sleeves. No. The orchestra is Alfred Newman. And yes, his orchestra. That guy's name he pops up every every once in a while. But what's the connection between him and Alfred E. Newman? I don't know. Why, what's the joke there? There's probably a way of finding this out. Yeah. So this is a score, but it actually kind of functions as an album that you could sit and listen to because mm -hmm. there, it alternates between orchestra pieces and just kind of hoot nanny songs. Yeah. It's a movie I have no desire to ever see. According to my dad, the TV version is better than the movie version. And then we have The Hidden. Having seen the movie and then listened to this soundtrack, I have to say that nothing about this music evokes the movie for me. It's like listening to music that has nothing to do with the movie The Hidden. And so it makes me wonder, how often does a film score create a mood? And how often does it just support a mood? A mood that's created more by performances and visuals and things like that. I think this is more support music rather than something like Psycho. Or, mm -hmm. you know. Which is so distinct that it right. brings you right there. A mysterious plane lands on a deserted beach. This movie begins where Dunkirk ended. <laughs> <laughs> and is completely forgotten about. This is an elaborate beach game. <laughs> Let's do this funny thing where I play a thing and you pretend to be a snake. It'll only take three hours. <laughs> I know you'd rather be surfing. <laughs> oh, come on, Professor. These are just normal American kids. American, yes. Normal, no. Did you see that snake thing? Oh, every time you twist your hips, something inside goes a flippity flip. I think it might be a pulmonary embolism. Don't stop now. <laughs> Why is she dressed like she works in a Korean nail salon? <laughs> hey, I know you. You're the guy who put the finger on Von Zipper. Putting the finger on Von Zipper is the only way to operate a zipper. Can I ask you something, Professor? Oh, yes. Are you studying these kids' sex life or are you getting involved in it? Weird old guys like us who hang around the beach get a lot of tail. It's usually from girls who are mad at their fathers. <laughs> How do I, uh... I look. You look like a comically exaggerated midlife crisis. If you want a pinch hitter, call Mickey Mantle. Pinch hit. If you want a pinch hit, <laughs> then call Mickey Mantle. <laughs> he might be in for the submission. I know what he is. He's a spy. A spy? In the house of love. Boy, this has been some night. Let's say that again. Boy, this has been some night. Yes! We have a couple of packages to open. Ooh, I do. know one is for you. All right, then. This is from Therese in Australia. Alexander in Andover, Mass. I'm going to need something powerful to cut this thing with. An acetine torch. It's acetylene. Whatever. I learned it from reading. <laughs> I didn't learn it from going to torch school. I'm seeing three DVDs in here. They're almost of a theme, but they're kind of not. U571, which I believe is a submarine movie. It has my favorite thing to hear in a submarine movie. All the controls are in German! <laughs> <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, which is a boat movie. Yes. Courage Under Fire, which seems like a military movie, but I'm not sure it has to do anything with boats. So, kind of a theme and kind of not. If you see a helicopter as a sky boat. Actually, these helicopters might be landing on an aircraft carrier, so... All right, usual box of bits and pieces. For Matt, close-up. Oh, it's a film. Abbas Kiarostami, I believe he is a Iranian? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not sure if you've seen this. I watched it last year. One of the most innovative and interestingly made documentaries I've ever seen. Hope you enjoy. I've seen three Iranian movies, and all of them completely different from each other, and also completely different from anything else I've seen. And two of them I love. Licorice mix. Oh, I love these, these things. We got buttons. Oh, yeah. I'm going to help all the poor children who can't afford buttons once I'm done with this project. Another book for my little one. Molly the Big Biggie Biggie. This is a true story from Karen Manbulo about Molly the Pig. It's an Australian and Aboriginal Australian. Oh, yeah. Well, that's very interesting. Mm, this is licorice and coconut. A magical mystery tour bus. Probably take this in Liverpool. 
Nice. Young Mr. Lennon outside the Cavern Club in statue form. Nice. The most effective wall in the world. This three foot tall thing, Hadrian's Wall. That'll keep out those picks. Dragon. I caught it myself. Oh, there we go. Lexi and I have recently created a category of movies that should never be remade because the originals cannot be improved unless it's by the Muppets. Movies added to this category so far, Streetcar Named Desire, Princess Bride, Rocky Horror Picture Show. All of those I would love to see in Muppet form. If the Muppets remade Rocky Horror, who would play Frankenfurter? Gonzo seems too obvious. But could Kermit pull it off? No. Hmm. Kermit and Piggy would be Brad and Janet. Oh yeah, totally, yeah. Gonzo would be R R Rat... Ratface? What's his he, name? He, Rizzo. His name is Rizzo? Wait, is his name Rizzo? I don't know. It's no, so no. Long his name seen. is... It starts Riff with... Riff Raff. That's it. Yeah. That would be Gonzo. Uh, then Gonzo I... and a chicken would be Riff Raff <laughs> and his sister. Dr. Scott would be played by... Um, Sam the Eagle. Sam the Eagle. Just for the, the moment of the reveal of the leg. Rocky would be played by... Who's the hunky one? Link. Link. The pig. <laughs> Link. <laughs> We've done over 180 episodes of Welcome to the Basement, and so it stands to reason that there might be some that you missed or some that you've forgotten about. At this point in the show, we recommend an episode from our back catalog. What do you recommend us watch? Thanksgiving has just come and gone, and that means we're in the Christmas season, so you should watch one of our Christmas episodes, specifically Krampus. Krampus. This is a movie that will fill you with the chilling Christmas spirit. This is a movie that both of us disagree on, so mm -hmm. it's interesting to see a... You know, kind of a clash of opinions there. Yes. And in this movie, Craig makes what could possibly his most obscure reference ever. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You watch the episode, you f figure out if you know what I'm talking about and what he's referencing. And there is one person, at least, in the YouTube comments, got my reference. Yes. So that makes it all worth it. There's a button at the end of this video. You can watch that episode. And there are other buttons where you can watch other episodes. And right now, you don't need to push a button to watch this. I love that car. Those cars, they're mm -hmm. so cool. Yeah. They're cool and nerdy at the same time. The guy who drives that car wears a Gilligan hat, but he's still kind of cool. <laughs>